All right, there we go. That's a marker, okay? Node and Rust Friendship Forever, the N-A-P-I-R-S way. I'm a nudist. I see plenty of... <laughs> Can't believe I read that out loud. It's no secret that Node.js solutions are not so performative. That's a new word for me. Especially if we consider a solution with a bunch of synchronous operations or vice versa, we will uh, we work with tricky multi-thread solutions. A good example is image processing or Cypher. Despite some performance issues, Node.js retains its reputation as a mainstream. Moreover, Node.js tries to be more flexible. A powerful Node.js add-on functionality allows developers to write some Node.js functionalities on C++. Node.js with Rust became popular last time. I meant this technique because I will discuss Rust programming language integration with Node.js. Why Rust? It's a good question. I want to provide some essential facts regarding Rust briefly. This is my favorite part about Rust, is that you first get to tell people why they don't understand how great Rust is. Memory safe approach, preventing memory leaks. Boom! Actually, it doesn't technically prevent memory leaks always. Uh, type safe, syntax control. Not sure what that even means. No data races. This is great. Issues owning uh, to concurrency management. Programs are compiled. No. Okay, so when they say no data race, they mean you can't read and write to the same location, but you can still most certainly program in generalized uh, race conditions. If you're doing multiple request for something and you need a value at the end and you goof it up because you weren't expecting a certain order that's still a race even though that's like i always have a hard time calling that a race condition but it is a condition based on race uh, programs are compiled in a ahead of time manner utilize and promotes zero cost abstractions oh it's my favorite phrase. That's my favorite. See that? That's an iterator. Zero cost abstraction. No resource consuming garbage collectors. No JIT compilers. No virtual machine. A minimal runtime and memory footprint. Very good dependency management tool. Helpful compiler errors with clear and doable recommendations. Apart from that, Rust is multi-threaded friendly and it has much simpler syntax compared with C, C++. Absolutely. Uh, you can find this regarding, yep, resource, resource. It's easy to see that Rust integration described above is a bit difficult. Fortunately, evolution does not come to a halt. Today, I'm glad to introduce to you a new animal to our technological zoo. Technological. Meet Nappy RS. Nappy RS is a framework for building pre-compiled Node.js add-ons in Rust. You guys ready for this? Are you guys ready to build, to look at this, to look at it, to look at it? Would you like, would you want to look at it? I bet you do. I bet you do. Uh, of course. The article aims to introduce you, is it, so how would you say this word? I always say nappy, but is it napy? Is it napi? Is it napi? I never know how to say this. I never know how to say this. Uh, as the easiest way to integrate Node.js with Rust, the best way to do uh, it is to provide nappy, napi, nappy, nappy, napi, nepalm. <laughs> what? Uh, the best way to do this is to provide more complicated uh, or a complicated example than a standard one. I will provide a Node.js application that gets a file, uploads it, and transforms it afterwards. Let's say it, uh, it is re let's see, reducing the saturation. The image operation above uh, should be provided on the Rust side. But before that, let's try some standard functionality. Package template. First, you need to install Rust. <laughs> Done. Second, I recommend creating a new project with the following template. Okay, blah, 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 blah. The Rust part. All right. Contains all the information you need. All right, what are we getting here? So here we go. Deny Clippy all. I always deny Clippy. So, okay, so cool. So you can actually get this little nappy thing. You can throw this on a function, and I assume this is retrievable now from Node.js, right? Uh, it's obvious to see the package and the other uh, JS stuff because we are talking about Rust and Node.js integration. Contains uh, dependencies like nappy RS CLI that allow you to build solutions. Also pay attention to the following files. Index. Okay. Look at that. A native binding. But what's the native binding? I just want to see that. All right, so I guess we're going to have to jump in and we're going to have to look at it really quickly. I, I do want to see what this, what, what all this is about. Wait, how did I get here? I don't want to install Rust. I, I'm, I'm joking. I don't want to install Rust. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, go to file, index. Where's the native binding? Where's this so-called native binding? Hmm. That doesn't, this, this doesn't feel fun. Hmm. 
native binding. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Well, it's that easy. It's that simple. Okay, so sure, there might be something. Maybe we could, you know, maybe we could come up with something where we could name this all the same thing. Maybe. And figure kind of, maybe maybe we could figure out something that's a little bit better here. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't understand a lot of these uh, requirements here. So maybe there's like an easier way to do this. You know what I mean? Maybe I don't want uh, Nappy, uh, Nappy RS anymore. Yeah, maybe not. That doesn't That doesn't look like a W right now. All right. Uh, do you remember Rust plus 100 definition above? No. Uh, these lines precisely represent a bridge between Rust and Node.js. Okay, contains... Oh, nice. It does a little... Oh, look at that. It does a little... Okay. Look at that. A little TypeScript generation. I like it. Important note. You shouldn't edit the files above. They are auto-generated and change every time Rust definition... Okay. Simple test. The following code illustrates how to run Rust definition or defined function. All right. So we get it, we run it, and that's that. Okay, let's do some image processing. Okay, okay, so we grab these things. We do this whole blah, 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 the Rust stuff. We add image. We throw in a generic view, pixels, do that, darker, file name, saturation, hit them with an image, hit them with the dimensions. What's the return value? Oh, there is no return value. What happens when expect, what do you think happens when expect doesn't work? Like, does it throw an error or does it, like, crash the whole node experience? Good questions here. I would assume that something like result should be returned if you wish to throw. Right? This on the... <laughs> the dimensions, right? It seems like a panic, right? Um, let's see. Applies this. Okay, so we build it. As a result, we get index. Okay, we get a new index, all this. And so now we get a darker. Okay, this is pretty cool. And now we can actually take a file and change it. Awesome. I mean, this is actually pretty cool. This could be a pretty... I'm, uh, I'm just saying, this could be pretty cool if it if it integrates with the result object in anyhow, and I can, like, do stuff awesomely. This sounds actually pretty cool, okay? Or run the commands below if you want to reproduce the steps. Okay, do all that stuff. And look at that. Why is there... Why is there uh, alpha in this one? There's alpha in this one, but not in that one. Weird. I thought we just made it darker. I thought we were just desaturating it. Uh, does Node have any kind of panic? It should throw. Uh, our Rust part is uh, ready, and it's time to implement a web application. All right. All right. I love as a, as a service. The final stitches. All right. Let's go. Make storage folder under the root. Okay. Let's do that. Server. Yes. Yes. This all looks good. Hit him with Express. Funny enough, use the slowest web framework in addition to Rust. That's the power of Rust. Okay. It even takes the slow. Make it fast. Remember that, kids. Makes it fast. Makes it fast. All right, so there we go. Bunch of no one cares about express crap. Uh, there we go. Read dir, does all this. Stat sync, get time. Render upload. Okay, uploads. Blah, 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 blah. Where's the, dark, where's the darker thing? Darker, 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 darker. All right. Darker. All right, so let's see. File, move, file path, if error. Oh, so it does try catch it. So I guess it does a try catch. So so if, if Rust panics, it must capture that? How does that work? To me, that makes me think it's like spawning a process to do stuff. Is that what's happening? That can't be what's happening. That can't, that can't be what's happening, right? Hmm. Well, I do want to play with this now. This actually looks pretty cool. Okay, add a little start. Yep, I don't want to explain uh, many of the solutions above because it's obvious for Node.js folks. Yep, yep, there's just two points. Uh, endpoints, upload and slash. Slash provides an upload form and a list of uploaded desaturated images. Uploads an image. Nice. Also, please look at the desaturation. All right, exciting. Yep, uh, the fact that we take a saturation value from a request as a number, it is a number, but it can add some interesting things. Did you know that if you don't provide a saturation or an empty string saturation, that will become a zero? One of the benefits of using plus. It only nans sometimes. <laughs> Not all the times. It's like, hey, which crazy version do you want? Do you want parse int, which is crazy, or do you want number casting, which is also crazy? You're probably thinking, what do you mean crazy? Well, let me show you. Okay, look at this. That becomes zero. That's crazy. 69 foo. That is a nan. That's not crazy. Parse int. That's crazy, right? So what kind of crazy do you want? 
with integers. I don't know. I don't know what you want, but you can choose what you want, and then you can be happy or sad about it. I don't know, okay? They both suck. You know what I mean? They both aren't awesome. None of them make me happy. Yeah. You did not know that? Yeah. It's a little fun fact. But parse int that does give a nan. So, like, you can nan, a, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it could happen. Pick your poison. So, if you really want a proper number function, you actually need to use these both in conjunction. Or you have to check for the empty string if you want to use the plus. You know what I mean? But then if you use parse int, you also have to check for that. Technically not a number. Technically, number is not a number because if you think about the IEEE 754-1986 specification, not a number is a valid representation and a and a 64-byte or 64-bit floating. You're like, thank you for thanks for saying that's a number. I think we're all very happy about it now. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, bro. Stop bowling JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, storage store. Okay, so let's do this one. So, I don't know if we need to really look at anything else, but this is actually pretty exciting. I'd say in general, I really do want to play with this because this is something that is like, it, it's actually kind of cool. The fact that you can just desaturate like that, even though the whole, uh, the, the, the whole alpha being messed up kind of it feels wonky, but nonetheless, this will be really fun to play around with. I think we should play around with this at some point. I would love to see what can you do in Rust? Like, at what point is doing something in Rust great or not great? How expensive is the bridge? Um, because there is, like, some real huge use cases. Like, right now, I have this huge problem with memory right now. And so you could imagine that if I could just send objects across a bridge into Rust and actually do an aggregation of data in Rust and not in uh, TypeScript, I theoretically could make something that's both fast and... Yeah, and... Uh, and uses low memory because the representation hopefully remains in in bytes instead of that. But we'll we'll see. I don't know if it's actually any good. It could be. You know what I mean? A uh, rusty bridge seems really bad. Yeah, I assume a rusty bridge seems really bad. But is it? I don't even know. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought I have. Anywho. Kind of cool. The name is the Prime Engine. The pri hey, the name's the Prime the Prime Engine.